problem. This is what people have got now. And so we have 33 people saying, when is it starting? When is it starting? Okay. So it's uh, so if there's another link, send me the link and I'll come into that. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two.
can be the of worship service by singing the Malayalam song, Lobin and Autumn Selection. Logi Jaran Nasab Tegatsu Sorga Gehe Viru Dinahi Paran Nilum Jan Maru Duba Mai Parani Churajan Pandito Paran Nilum Jan Maru Duba Mai Parani Thank you. 
വസ്ത്രധാരിയായി എന്റെ പി എന്റെ മുൻപിൽ പാടിടും ഞാൻ സുപ്രവസ്ത്രധാരിയായി എന്റെ പി എന്റെ മുൻപിൽ പാടിടും ഞാൻ ദുഃഖത്തിന്റെ പാനപാത്രം കർത്താവിന്റെ കയ്യിൽ തന്ന എന്ന പാട്ടുപാട് ദുഃഖത്തിന്റെ പാനപാത്രം ദുഃഖത്തിൻ്റെ പാന പാത്രം കർത്താവൻ്റെ കയ്യിൽ തന്ന
For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God, the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he has put everything under his feet. Now when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself, who has put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to put him who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. Now, if there is no resurrection, what will those who are not bap- who are baptized for the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized for them? And as for us, why do we endanger ourselves every hour? I face death every day. Yes, just as surely as I boast about you in Christ Jesus our Lord. If I fought wild beasts in Ephesus with no more than human hopes, what have I gained? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Come back to your senses as you ought, and stop sinning, for there are some who are ignorant of God, and I say this to your shame. Yeah. 
members of the Emmanuel Matumba Church and all guests. It is with a deep sadness that I stand here today to bid, to bid farewell to our beloved Dr. P. John Mika. Dr. Lingen and uh, Dr. Annie Lingen came to Lavak in September 1978. Ever since they arrived Lavak and started their practice in the Agape Medical Plaza in Lavak, the Lingens were virtual pillars of the Lubbock community. They both retired in December 2019. Dr. Lincoln, during the years of practice, became one of the most respected dental practitioners in Lubbock. His patients include many dignitaries, including some of our bishops and clergy. He took care of his patients, regardless of their ability to pay. It is important to note that he was the driving force behind the construction of the Emmanuel Martama Church in Lank. During, during the building of the church, he encouraged many of his patients to pay their bills directly to the church's building fund rather than to his practice. Thus, selflessly, strengthening the fund and at the same time giving his patients the opportunity for a tax deduction for their expenses. He was a very skilled clinician. My, my husband used to say that he is one man who is able to give people golden crowns before they get to heaven. <laughs> because my husband himself got one from Dr. Linda. In addition to his deep and profound dedication to Matama Church, he was very involved in the social sphere of the Lubbock community. Dr. Lincoln was an integral part of the Gideons of Lubbock and a member of the Lions Club of Lubbock. Dr. Lincoln was our most recent vice president and we will surely miss him in that. He had a strong presence in Matoma Church of North America and Europe, serving three terms of 10 years as treasurer of the diocese, three times as Sabha Council member, and thereafter three times as Sabha Mandalam member. And why the selection 
committee. He also served two terms in the Episcopal nomination, bo nomination board and uh, participated in selecting three bishops. He was very proud to tell me very recently that Mrs. Dr. Annie Lincoln served as one term member for three years and that she served two terms of six years as an assembly member. He was a great friend of the Christian churches everywhere. In Lubbock, he frequently invited the clergy and leaders of other churches to participate in our church celebration. His sphere of friendship extended to the mayors and council members and other dignitaries in Lubbock and throughout the United States. Dr. Lincoln was a close friend of his grace most Reverend Dr. Joseph Matoma Metropolitan, Right Reverend Dr. Isaac Marfilopsinos Signini, and all our bishops, including my first cousin, the late Dr. Zacharias Martiophilos Suffragan Metropolitan whom he was very fond of. He participated generously in the construction of the Shandigiri Asma in Kunjatagara in Adapala, sorry, Kunjatagara in Adapala, close to Aluwa and the Nedumbacheri Airport. There, he started a dental clinic for serving the people in that community. Dr. Lincoln was instrumental in establishing the Trikunmapura Mission School, which is supported annually by our Emmanuel Matama Church. He was instrumental in instituting the Matoma Mission Field in Mexico, where he oversaw the construction of housing for the families of the fishermen there. He was very proud of his roots and played a key role in the establishment of the Pandialical Kudumbayogam, becoming its founding patron, along with Reverend Uman Vargis as the first president. Majority of the details of the family were collected for the Kudumbacharitram through his personal efforts, and he provided the necessary financial support for for it to a great extent. His hand and purse were open to the needy. Now that he has entered in the realm of glory, where, it, where there is no more fitness, no more pain, no more tears, no more suffering, no more doctors, and no more hospital visits. Where there are no more departures, but only arrivals, he is rejoicing, striving 
in the streets of gold. Let us also rejoice for his sake. At this point, on behalf of the Emmanuel Matama Church and my personal behalf, let me express my heartfelt condolences to the Lyndon family. May God bless you all. Thank you. Condolences, Ray, Matthew, and Marie. We are here today to celebrate the life and legacy of our dear Dimitai. He led a good and simple life, glorifying God in all the good that he did. I have known Dimitai through church activities and took notice of his charismatic personality and infectious smile. In 2004, where we became family, I got to know Liga Chai better. We formed a special bond. Anytime I called him, he would endearingly say a word in the month. A word in a colloquial language of Madras means how is going. Our common bond is our, besides our children was the Matama Church. Because I belong in St. Peter's Matama Church in New Jersey, always asked me about how the things going over there. He was so curious about so many things happening in our church, so he wants to get to know more about when I, when I talk to Linga Chai. He always provides advice on the acquisition of the, a new church building of St. Peter's of Matama Church in New Jersey. I told him three months ago, we as a church were able to come to a successful conclusion and complete the purchase of the new building. He was so happy about that. So I also invited Linga Chayan to the inauguration ceremony and he said, okay, mock at it. let me see. And he said he would gift a wooden cross to the church as he has done for many other churches in the past. Linga Chayan also had a jovial personality and enjoyed making others laugh. At our children's engagement during his speech, he began with the Bible words, Psalm 21. I lift my eyes to the hills. And Liga Chayan cleverly said, Now on my help come from the hills. As my family name, Malay means hills in Malayalam and Tamil. He was also at this time that I admired Linga Chayan for forging deep relationship around him as it was very important to him. God blessed him, Linga Chayan as an eloquent orator, and the Linga Chayan always glorified God when he spoke. On a visit to my home, we attended a service at St. Thomas Matama Church in Yonges, New York. We arrived early, and the guard at the time, George, uh, George and Achen, asked Linga Chayan to give the sermon and, his, and to speak about his standard practice and the profession. Linga Chayan, without hesitation, delivered the talk to the parishioners while mm -hmm. focusing on God. And then the 
the Irish nation sincerely enjoys Linga Giant's message and like her so much. During one of my stays at his home, he took me to the Agape Clinic. While in his office, I noticed an open Bible. He told, he told me if a patient canceled or delayed, he would spend that time reading and studying the Word of God. Linga Chan's love for God was always evident. Amana, Anilman, Sunilmanan, and Linamo. I know this is a difficult time for you. Take comfort in having celebrated so many milestones and sharing so many great memories together in life. Linga Chan was a leader and a faithful man who through his act, actions encouraged us to support, love, respect one another. He touched many lives, positive. Thank God for his life. Take comfort in knowing that he is with our Lord. May God continue to bless the family, the mother of my church, with Limit Chinese serve, and the community that he loves so much. We all love you, Limit Chinese. We will miss you dearly until we meet again. Let me conclude with a word from the Bible, Second John, verse 1 to 8. 1, 8. Watch yourself that you do not lose what we have accomplished, but that you may receive a full reward. Thank you. Bless us all. part of my life, my entire life. Memory could be registered. He was part of my life. I was told that as a toddler, on several mornings, I would wake up and cross the garden and walk to his annex with a thumb in my mouth, waiting patiently for the newlyweds to open the door. His love for his family was very evident to me from a very young age. Growing up in India, he would fill a lot of my parents' roles, going to parent-teacher conferences, getting us ready for school, even ironing our uniforms. There was one thing, he never showed a difference between his children and me and my brother. He also filled the roles of my parents when the principal called for, for problems that I <laughs> made several times. <laughs> I could talk with him without reservation and express my emotions. And even in his 40s, I mean, and we would communicate in Tamil as it brought memories from India. I have several fond memories of my uncle. He was an athlete and even in his 40s would compete with me as I was a teenager and still gave me a beating. I do also have a crown in my mouth made by him. His faith was unshakable and I remember as a young man Pachasi speaking at the church service. The story of the paralytic man that was lowered through the roof healed by Jesus, and how he specifically was focusing on the faith of the men that lowered him to the very crowded house. He lived that same faith like those men, trying to help paralytic souls that came in his life for help, for some of you are here. This week I was thinking of his life, one thing came to me over and over again. And that is, he was an oasis of love. 
When I moved to the U.S., he was the oasis of love, support, and strength. I would always come to his house. I always hugged it. When I was single, married, and with two children, the intent is instrumental in helping me find my wife. He has brought my children. My, Paul, my son Paul is his godson, sitting here, about 17 years old. When I needed support, both Annie Mama and Kochachi showed me unconditional love. I can talk of multiple interactions of love or, and arguments and guidance he gave me. But I believe those are for me to keep and recall in my mind to be a better human and that I could live like he did. I believe I see the same love in my mother and you children and pray you continue the legacy to continue to share his faith in God and love for kindness. And I'd like to pray Dr. Ray for the It is my honor to be here to speak a few words to honor my uncle. It has been a privilege and a blessing to be his niece. Over the years, I've had a long experience with him. That One of the things that has stood out was his great spirit of resilience and perseverance. The challenges he encountered did not stop him, and he always persevered for God's vision. He worked tirelessly as a faithful servant of God, it was very inspiring to see his love for the church and his dedicated service with the church. He was always motivated to encourage those who were close to him to pursue and follow their dreams. And that is one thing that he persisted with me also. But he also had a great sense of humor and loved to make people laugh along the way. I'll always remember his big smile and laugh. In all his work, you could see the great love he had for his family. He was a loyal husband and a dedicated father. And he was my uncle, and I couldn't be more grateful for his love and time and the experiences I've had with him. Yes, we will miss him here, but we have the reassuring promise that we will see him again. To Annie Mama and the ch children, may the cherished memories comfort all of you, and God's unfailing love and unchanging grace hold and sustain you all as you move into the next chapter of life's journey. God bless you all. You are the by Mr. Lena Rachel Rowe. Thank you, Archen. Family and friends, on behalf of our family, I want to thank all of you for coming here today to support us through this difficult time, but also for joining us to help us celebrate Daddy's amazing life. So many people have talked about what an amazing and godly man Daddy was, especially with everything that he did for the Martha Church here in the United States and India. But today, I want to tell you about what an amazing father and grandfather he was. My relationship with Daddy was a very unique and special relationship. The best part about our relationship was our playful banter. Daddy and I could joke around with each other in ways that no one else could. Um, about a month ago, Daddy fell, and he ended up hitting his elbow, his knee, his leg, his head, and bit his tongue in like four different places. And when I found out about it, I immediately rushed home and I asked him, I said, Daddy, you know, are you okay? Is your leg okay? And he said, yeah, Molly, it's okay. I said, is your elbow okay? Is your mouth okay? And he's like, yeah, Molly, it's okay. And I said, well, I'm not going to ask you about your head because God knows that's too hard to hurt. <laughs> so he immediately laughed and he said, you know, in his typical strict 
choice. Adi, adi And you all know the rest of that statement. I'm not going to go ahead and repeat it. But that's how daddy was. That's how our relationship was. No matter what was going on, whether it was good or bad, I was able to put a, dad, a smile on daddy's face and he was able to put a smile on mine. Two things that I know that daddy definitely passed down to me was his stubbornness and his pondiacal trait of di diplomacy and being able to argue my case. I remember one time when I was about 14 or 15, um, I really, really, really wanted a pair of Doc Martin boots. And they finally went on sale. So I went to Daddy and I said, Daddy, can you please take me to the mall and buy me these boots? And he said, no, Mole, you don't need any more shoes. You have too many shoes, you don't need any more shoes. You know, I was sitting there thinking about it and I just remembered that Daddy had bought some new furniture. So I asked him, I was like, Daddy, you just bought that new furniture, right? He's like, yeah. I go, did you really need that furniture? And he goes, no, but I bought it because it was on sale. And I just looked at him with my smirk that I normally have. And he just looked back at me and goes, all right, go get your shoes, let's go to the mall. I think that was the moment he finally realized that he had actually taught me too well, his trait. And I think he realized he was never going to win another argument with me again. So he didn't even bother after that point. And I have a million more stories like that, and I could go on for hours, but I won't. Um, another aspect that made Daddy an amazing father was that he taught us all to pray and, and to rely on God's help through anything, which is something that his father, my Appleton, taught him. Prayer and studying the Bible was very important to Daddy, and he made sure to make everyone around him understand how important that was as well. He would even tell all of his patients to read their Bible and pray twice a day and watch how God would change their lives. Daddy also made sure that we learned Malayalam, all the Malayalam hymns and all the Malayalam liturgy in, in the Markama Church. And he especially worked really close with the Saba office to have the Malayalam liturgy and hymns transliterated into English. And I know he did that just for Atatun and Kotatun and I, but as a father, he knew it would benefit the future generation of the Martha Ma Church as well. Family was so important to Daddy. He wanted everybody in the family to be close and stay close. He made sure we met all of our elders and our cousins from a very young age and learned exactly how we were related to one another. To Daddy, family was just as important as church and prayer, and he treated everyone like family even people he just met, which is another trait that Daddy passed down to me. Not only was Daddy an amazing father, but he was also an amazing grandfather. The first thing he bought every grandchild was a Bible, passing on the faith to the next generation. He could never get enough hugs and kisses from them, and he made every little thing a grand and special occasion. With my kids, he always had a crisp $2 bill ready and waiting any time that they lost a tooth. I'm surprised my children didn't just voluntarily start pulling teeth out of their mouth just to get that crisp $2 bill. Because, trust me, they definitely banked from Apachan Hamachi whenever they lost a tooth. Daddy was also loud and he was joyous. Anytime he was on the phone, we would also joke, we would always joke that Daddy didn't even need the phone and people in India could still hear him without the phone because he was so loud and so joyous. And I can still hear his booming laugh right now and I'm sure he's up in heaven laughing the way he always did. The greatest gifts Daddy could ever give me was his heart, his faith, his love for humankind, 
his personality, and his stubbornness. Because without those gifts, I would not be the person I am today. We will miss you very much. But because of the faith that you have instilled in me, we can celebrate your incredible life and have peace knowing that you are in heaven with your, whole, with your body whole again and not stuck.
grace and love and worship you because through your Son you have redeemed humankind from the subjection of sins and death through disobedience and instead have given us the victory over them. O Lord, hear us and bring our prayers and petitions. You have heard our service of your servant who has departed from this world according to your will. O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have grace always and remember imperish of life and live expectation of eternal life by your grace. May this word be of blessed and peaceful departure. Amen. Verses from the Psalm. Hear this, all you people. Give ear, all inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor. Surely everyone goes about like a shadow. Surely for nothing they are in turmoil. They heap up and do not know who will gather. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquity. For he knows how we were made. He remembers that we are the dust. As for mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like a flower on the field. For the wind passes over it and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting for those who fear him, and his righteousness, the children's children. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor does anything that goes down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time on and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall forever. Amen. Manmayanaya. Help us, O Lord, to give to our 
hope to you, praise, adoration, worship, thanksgiving, and glory to our Lord the Messiah, who is the source of all life, the hope of the dead, who will rise up, those who have been buried in dust and give them joy, who is the light that shines in the darkness, who has won victory over death by destroying, and who renews his creation, to him be praise, honor, and worship, now the funeral of his servant, and all the days of our life. O oh Lord God, who created the world out of nothing and brought everything into being, you created man and gave him royal dignity. You gave him freedom and power to choose good and reject evil. By the deceits of Satan, he violated your command and brought upon himself the judgment of returning to the dust out of which he was created. O God and Father of all mercies, you did not cast humankind away as fallen, but you redeemed us by the death of your only Son, whom you sent as the great physician for all mankind. O Lord, lover of men and humankind, hear our prayers and petitions, which we now make at the funeral of our dear brother, Dr. P. John Lincoln, who has departed from this world of sorrow to the world of eternal joy. O Lord God, at the second coming of your only Son, when he will reward the good and the bad according to their deeds and give the kingdom to those workers who toil with discretion, when he will cast the wicked into the eternal darkness and receive the saints into the dwellings of light, when both cry out and say, O Lord, your just and your judgments are most righteous. We hope and believe that then this your servant, who has been baptized in your name, who has taken part in your divine sacrament and trusted in the crucifixion of your only son, will not be abandoned in the deep pit, will not suffer pain in the unquenchable fire, but will rejoice in the light of your countenance will join the company of your saints and will inherit eternal bliss. In this hope we have comfort at the departure of your servant and we comfort each other. We also praise you for this glorious and blessed hope. O oh God of mercy and compassion, we pray that you would console and comfort all of us, especially the members of the bereaved family. Wipe away the tears from their eyes and remove the great grief of their hearts, fill them with a peace that is above all anxiety, deliver them from the anguish without hope, uphold their hearts with your heavenly host that they may not fall into endless sorrow. Lead them with your might right hand, lead them with your mighty right hand in the saintly perfection. Let them not despair like people without hope but have peace and comfort through faith and trust in you. Satisfy them with all spiritual and material blessings. Give them strength to praise you as did the righteous Job, saying, The Lord has given and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. O Lord, you know our end. Help us all to be ready and prepared to depart from this world when you bring us to our life's end. Grant us an exalted position before your throne. Remember us with your intimate love for humankind. Make us worthy, O Lord, to praise and glorify you with your Son and the Holy Spirit, with all your saints, now and forever. Amen. O God, Father, Lord Jesus, you are the life and recession. And how assured that those who believe in you live even though they die. You have promised that no one who believes in you shall die. We magnify your holy name for all your servants who are departed this life in faith and trust in you. Lord, enable us by following the noble example to be made worthy of your heavenly kingdom and to render glory 
worship and honor to you and your Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, remember where we are today and where we shall be tomorrow. Today we converse in houses. Tomorrow we shall be quiet in our graves. Blessed is everyone who remembers this every day. Brothers and sisters, bear especially in mind that wealth, beauty, and power all decay and perish as though they had never existed. Blessed is he whose power is imperishable. Blessed is the Messiah who raises the dead and adorns them with glory and the resurrection. Amen. Some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise it, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all of all people most to be pitied. Praise be to you, 